And it's just getting worse. I mean, this is rock bottom, and we're we're one forced meat gazing away from the early nineties. Like it's this is as this is as bad as it gets. Like this is like ninety one, ninety all over again. And then being in the Herald for all the wrong reasons. And th- we got that today with your brilled peppers. They're inept on the field. How many penalties yesterday? Fourteen, but twelve accepted. They can't get out of their own way. The offensive coordinator's a moron. The quarterback play stinks. Like, how do you lose that game yesterday to that Miami team that's somehow kind of, sort of, going into it worse than you, but apparently not because you can't even beat them? This is it. They're they're the laughing stock of the league. Right now, today, Monday, October 7th, the New England Patriots are the laughing stock of the, of the NFL. I think they infected the Dolphins yesterday on top of it. I, I, I think they're contagious. That, that second quarter, in particular, that second quarter was special. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Explain. So again, I just made a short list of what happened during that second quarter yesterday. This is what happened. And I'm going to offer just a few more details. A blocked punt by the Patriots, which was on the Miami 25-ish. No points. <laughs> Sorry. I, I just find that to be like almost mathematically impossible. But let me give you the list first. The second quarter featured... A block punt, a botched field goal, a missed 33-yard field goal, a shanked punt, an errant slash fumbled shotgun snap. Some of these were Miami mistakes. I'm just telling you what the whole second quarter featured. Ten penalties, including two false starts and eight penalties in the first six minutes of the second quarter. The teams won a combined one for eight on third down, and there were no points scored in the quarter. All of that happened. You literally got to sit there and see two teams suck historically and not score. Okay? So the product, and the Patriots have been this way all year, as has Miami. So I'm telling you, aside from the fact that the Patriots stink, which is obvious, the product on the field yesterday was maybe the worst. I, I, I feel like I'm saying this every week, but maybe the worst I've seen in the NFL game in 40 years. Horrendous. Horrendous. Horrendous football. But we expected, Horrendous. We expected that. I mean, I think most people thought that was going to be a field goal fest, like a 13-9 type of game. That's what we got because both of those teams mostly blow. The personnel, I mean, I would take Tyreek Hill. I'd take Jaden Waddle. Jaden Waddle. Uh, there, are, there is certainly more talent on that Miami team, but these teams can't score. The ineptitude, the stupidity, the lack of discipline that Gerard Mayo seem, seemingly has no control on this team, that's the most annoying thing. I can deal with bad football, but when it's stupid and you're getting a middle, million pounds, penalties like that's what it's like offensive to me mike years ago i covered a high school championship game in foxborough the final score was six to two it was way better than that (laughs) it was it was way better than that walpole beat brockton in that game and i'm telling you it was a way better product than that so i i just think the story goes beyond bad football players uh, which they obviously have probably the worst they probably have the worst football players but i i it's you have to be able to parse out the other things that are happening there beyond that roster because uh, if they improve the roster, who are they giving those better players to? And I'm not just talking about the coaching. I'm talking about the entire operation and from top to bottom. Just I have no faith in what's going on down there. And I've been on this for a couple of years. And there was, you know, I, I would say there was that two-week little window to start this year. Cincinnati, and then even the loss to Seattle, where I said maybe Mayo and his staff are going to, you know, give me more than I thought, and they'll, you know, there's a little something more there than I gave it credit for, and I was hoping for it. But outside of that two week window, I mean, really going back, you know, like three or four years, I felt this way about Bill and his staff at the end too. I mean, no faith in that, and no faith in sort of ownership being able to pull him out of this and doing what it takes to pull him out of this. No faith there in the commitment from up top to to all the way to the bottom. So it's like it's just a complete shaking of the confidence of. So I'm saying that because even if they go to Drake May and he's the guy, I I think there's just only so much he can do. And and I don't think anything else that they have down there is good enough. Uh, I I don't. I, I think Gerard Mayo, if you drop Gerard Mayo onto a good team, 
a good veteran team that had talent in place, I think he'd be fine. Uh, and maybe he'd be good. Maybe he'd be good with some talent. Uh, because I think he stands for the right things and certainly knows what the right thing is to do. And so if a lot of things were in place, could he be a CEO of a, a good operation? I, I I think so. Maybe. But he's completely ill-suited to where they are, which is starting from scratch with a million things to do, a million places that they need to improve and grow, and it's just it it's too big of a spot for him. It's just he's not the guy. And very few people are. I mean, let's I don't, I don't know who is, but it, it's it's not a, a you know first time head coach, five year linebacker coach. like it's just not the spot for him. It's season over his head, as most guys would be. So yeah, play Drake play play Drake Drake May this week. What you, you still have the wrong staff. I don't know if the coach is the right coach. Is ownership really going to do everything it takes to build around him in the right way and invest in it fully? Like, I don't know. I, I don't think so. So it's like, overall, it's just such a demoralizing scene down there that the quarterback thing to me, I just, we, we sort of, I think we talk about that less than most everybody else for a reason. Because, like, really, what's the diff? Right. It's kind of moot. You know, it's a mess regardless. Even if he comes in there, it's going to be a little bit more exciting for a, a bit, I guess. Otherwise, like, they're still going to be trash. Oh, no, no. It's it's a disaster. What they are is a disaster. They are. They're a disaster. And so. And I understand what you're saying. I, I, you know, at no point did I say it was about the talent. I'm just saying that that was inept. So, of course. On so many levels, of, it was inept. Of course, it's about the talent. But, you know, you still have too many men on a punt early on. Like, that's not about talent. Uh, like, yeah, I, Keon White. Okay, so look, like there, there were a couple of penalties in the second half where you say maybe it is talent. That Ellis kid? Oh, yeah, Christian Ellis. The extra S is for stupid. Christian Ellis, that, that, that pass interference call, you know, third and 13. And this is Miami. You're, you're still leading. You're in the fourth quarter. And Miami's got third and 13, and he tackles the running back on a four-yard little pass that even if he completes it, you know, and when I say tackles him, he tackles him before the ball gets there. It's, like it's one of the worst pass interference calls you'll ever see. And it always was born out of the fact that he didn't know where to line up. He was running around with his head cut off before the snap. Do you see this? Yeah, of oh, course. Yeah. He's like on yep. the one side, then he realizes on the other side, so he runs to the other, and then he just m mugs the guy on a four-yard pass that you could have given up easily, no problem. And it's fourth and nine. And so he tackles him, and it's like, so okay, so that, because you could say, because Christian Ellis sucks, and he's barely an NFL player. Keon White, who's like one of your better players, when he relied upon guys, Horse collar tackle, which they outlawed years ago, and everyone knows the rule, except for maybe him. And then two plays later, headbutts the quarterback. I know. It was unbelievable. Le 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 you know, like, like a human missile. Leaps into him with yeah. his head. Like on what planet are those two plays okay? So it, it's – there's like a – not even a scheme problem, which there is. There's a scheme problem offensively for sure and defensively maybe. But then there's like an individual, are you reaching these guys kind of thing from Gerard Mayo on down? Of course. So, yeah, they have bad players, maybe the worst. But is the coaching helping? Are they? Is the coaching getting anything more out of them? What do we see on that level? Oh, no, I, I don't see them taking coaching at all, frankly. I don't see the scheme. I don't see them reaching these players on an individual level. I don't see, I mean, I don't see anything. So you just throw a young quarterback into the middle of that? I mean, I'm here for it. I'll watch it. It's better for the show. Great. Go ahead. We play him. But what what else do they have going on down there? It's not going to be enough. Unless the guy's Joe Montana. And then even then, you know, there's only so much. You know, most of these good young quarterbacks who've popped, if they've either gone on to teams that have something going for it or good coaching, you have none of it. So what is the diff? And now you got guys getting arrested for strangling their girlfriends with cocaine on site. Great. Now we really are, as Murray said, back in the 90s or even into beyond. Now we're back. Now we're back there where, like, the players' attorneys 
are almost as notable as the players themselves. He has to have hired this Scarmuccio. No, like, no he has he? It, unfortunately, he got some sort of like you know just basic bore lawyer. My Boo. Hope, my hope was as soon as I heard this story. Boo. How dare you say that my client had cocaine in his house for a party before the game? Mistake. Hire this gal. That's right. So now we're back to this the clown show. Now it's like a cl- every other week. There's some sort of off the field clown show, which is full circle. That when I started covering the team at the end of the '90s, that's what it was. Every other week, it felt like I was on those effing courthouse steps, courthouse courthouse steps in Norfolk, wherever the hell that was, Walpole District, wherever. Like every other week, so this is what it is, and uh, man, it is grim. And, and I, I I don't have much faith that they're coming out of it. I really don't, because who's leading the way? I've lost faith all the way up top, everyone they've hired down below, all the way through. I'm not sure they have anyone to lead them out right now. There was another winnable game yesterday. Oh, sure it was. Like, I mean, really winnable game. And and this is what I mean. It's like, that's why even if even if they're winning the quote-unquote wrong way, in unsustainable way, if, if, if you pull out one of these two, you know, the Seattle game, the easy win, or this, you're two and three, three and two, and it's like, it, the the stink doesn't stink as much because there's a little bit more momentum or hope or something there. You get to say they're still trying to find their way. But, you know, they're, they're, there's going to be some lumps, but they're winning games. And players are just sort of stay online just a little bit more because there's a little something there. Hey, there's a shot there. If this happens or that happens, okay. Now it's like one in four wheels are off smoking if you got them, literally. Like, what's the diff? And it just unravels from there. And it doesn't do anyone any good. I don't know, like, neat. You have the first overall pick. Great. You need an offensive lineman. Fun. That's great. I am not. 0.0. Call somebody else. If you want to talk about the tackles in the draft, as Zoe said to end his call. No shot. Not doing it. I don't want to talk about the quarterbacks coming out of college. Never mind some offensive linemen. No chance. I'll go sell insurance if that's what I have to do. Talk about some sort of college offensive lineman for the next five. Nope. No, thank you. No, sir. Nope. I'm just going to rip the team for where they are. Inexcusable. Joke that they're this bad. No excuse. It's not okay. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Felger and Mez here. For more Patriots analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 98.5thesportshub.com.